Hi third graders, I'm here today to read our final chapters of Save Me a Seat. I can't believe that we're almost finished with this book. We have three short chapters left to find out what happens with Joe and Ravi. I hope that you've been enjoying these chapters with me in the classroom and at home now that we're teaching and learning through distance learning. So let's finish up this book and see what happens to our characters. So the last that we heard was Joe talking about that he had some type of plan and Dylan and Samreen went back to the classroom when they were all going to the library so the custodian could clean up the classroom and all of a sudden he comes running out of the room and his pants are all wet and he's kind of jumping around and kind of swatting at his pants so we'll have to see what happens. Chapter 47, Ravi. What kind of fool puts leeches in his pants? Loosening the lid had been a capital idea, nothing less than pure genius. Dylan is running around like a headless chicken. Then the bully of Albert Einstein Elementary School drops his pants and runs screaming down the hallway in his starry underwear. Brilliant. I say a secret pair of thanks to my grandfather and to the poor innocent leeches who sacrificed their lives for this important occasion. Later, after Dylan Samreen has called his mother to come pick him up and the cleaner has finished wiping up Emily Mooney's vomit, we return to the classroom. Would you like to finish telling us your story, Ravi? Mrs. Beam asks. No, thank you, I say. I don't need to show off anymore. I'm not like Dylan Samreen, and I never will be. I believe it's your turn to guess, Ravi, Mrs. Beam says, holding the basket out to me. I close my eyes, make a wish, and pull out a card. There is more to me than meets the eye, I read. Ah, says Mrs. Beam, now that's a tough one, especially for you, Robbie, because you're new here. Would you like to choose another card instead, something that might be a bit easier to guess? I shake my head. This is the card I wanted to get, the one I had wished for. I carry it over and set it down beside the glass dish where the blue candy is. It's Joe, I say. Joe nods, then lifts his head and looks up at me. I smile and he smiles back. His eyes are brown, the color of cinnamon sticks Alma bought with her from Bangalore. How in the world did you ever guess that, Mrs. Beam says impressed. It was easy, I tell her. These candies have four layers. Most people assume there are only three, but assumptions are often wrong. There is more to them than meets the eye. Did you learn that in India? Asks Mrs. Beam. No, I tell her. I learned it here from Joe. Hmm. Chapter 48, Joe. My mom and dad are both pretty smart people, but the truth is they don't know everything. Turns out you don't have to punch someone in the nose or blab about your feelings to get your point across. Sometimes all you need is a little help from a friend. There are some things about my life that are probably never going to change. Like, for instance, my awesome metabolism or the fact that I have APD. But I've only been in fifth grade for five days and I've already noticed a big change. The other day, when Mr. Barnes told me that I would have that, sorry, I lost my place as I was flipping pages. Here we go. The other day, when Mr. Barnes told me that the world was full of Dylan Samreens, I was pretty bummed out. But now that I know it's possible for a couple of zebras to outsmart a crocodile, life is starting to look up. Not only that, but it's Friday. Pizza day. Mmm, pizza sounds pretty good. So when he's talking about zebras, he's talking about himself and Robbie and how they aren't the standouts, they're not the bullies, they're just going with the flow. They're the zebras and they work together as a pack, right? And somebody like Dylan Samreen, who they're comparing to a crocodile, is a bully and is unkind and will go after the weaker zebras. But if the zebras all work together, then they can outnumber and beat a crocodile, right? So he really has learned the importance of friendship and that when two nice people work together, two heads are better than one, that sometimes somebody unkind like Dylan Samreen can be taught a lesson. Chapter 49, last chapter of our book, told to us by Ravi. I have always been Amma and Appa's shining sun and my grandparents' pride and joy, but today I have learned something very important. 
winning is not always about shining the brightest. Sometimes it's about sharing the light with someone who has been waiting in the shadows all along. It is 1130 and the bell has just rung. My first week at Albert Einstein Elementary School is almost over. Alma's black tongue was right after all. Things have turned out okay. As I pick up my tiffin box and walk out of room 506, I feel like a new person. I haven't decided yet whether I will eat my curd rice or try the pizza today, but it doesn't matter because I know I will not be eating my lunch alone. When I get to the lunchroom, I know my new friend will be saving a seat for me. Oh, and I am right. What a nice ending to the book. And it finally explained why it's called Save Me a Seed. It saved that little nugget for us until the very end. So, oh my goodness, Joe and Robbie have made it through so much together. And that is the end of our book. So, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. They really did learn such a wonderful lesson about friendship. And I picked this book originally because it helps teach us about diverse different characters. And I think that even the front cover I really love because it represents Joe and Ravi as different people who come from different backgrounds, but they ended up coming together, this little group of zebras, the two of them, and kind of defeating the crocodile, which is Dylan Samreen, and teaching him a lesson about the importance of being a good person. And I don't know if Dylan will ever change. And unfortunately, we do all have Dylans in our lives. But we also hopefully have good friends like Joe and Robbie who are there and will stand up for you and be by your side. I had so much fun reading this book to you guys, both in the classroom and digitally. And I hope that you enjoyed it too. Have a good rest of your day. Bye for now.